At this point, I've done all of the modeling for this retro telephone for Blender Challenge Retro. All right, and I've set up the UV. So I'm gonna come in here and I'll show you that I've got a bunch of UV tiles. All right, so I've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I've got two up here. All right, and everything is placed where I want it to be and unwrapped. And, um, you know, I can show you a little bit of the seams that I've done. I really don't like doing too much of that on camera because sometimes it just takes, takes time to do it. And I'm not uh, any expert at it. It's just a question of trial and error. But I've set up seams in some sort of strategic locations to help me with the texturing of this thing all right so there's a seam in there and that's going to allow me to select a little bit easier some of these areas okay so that is done and i've got this thing exported as an fbx and i'm going to bring it into substance painter now so over in substance painter i'll hit file new because i'm using udims i'm going to choose the uv tile workflow and i will select my model here and click OK. And there's the model. And the first thing to do, of course, is to bake the UV maps. Well, probably the first thing to do really is to look and see if anything looks invisible, which would generally mean that that my faces are facing the wrong way. OK, so I'm going to bake this now. And I'll set it at 2048, uncheck the ID mask. And we'll click and this will take some time it's nice to see this when we start seeing um, small squares which will generally mean that I'll have more resolution okay but I'm gonna let this go and I'll come back to you when it's done the model is now baked so let's have a look at it it's looking fine to me I'm looking for discolored regions I'm not really seeing any and uh, that's a good sign all right let's look at the texture sets you can see all the uv tiles so there are 12 of them and this just says body i'm going to change this to say retro telephone that will be the one and probably the only material i guess i'm i should be able to do 99 percent of the texturing the only thing I may change is I may do something else down here that I don't do today. Or I may do something and I may just adjust it or change it. Uh, I will have you know that I decided to just make these cylinders larger so they actually overlap the circles. And I'm not going to use the holes uh, because I just felt that they were unnecessary and I wanted to change the size of those. And of course, you know, putting down the seams and making small adjustments so that things look a little bit better. Okay, so this is going to be pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, and I'm going to be relying on smart materials. And most of them are going to be ones that come with Blender, but I mean, I may have uh, gotten something. So for example, this gold damage, which is what I'm going to start off with. I don't know if that comes with a blender, uh, sorry, substance painter, or if I found it somewhere. Now, I was a little bit uncertain if I wanted to use that one or if I want to use this bronze armor one. I really like the bronze as well, and it's got a little bit more um, stuff to it. So, oh, geez, I don't know which one looks better in my mind because I do want it looking kind of old. I'm gonna start, however, with this gold damage, it's a little bit brighter, and I might stick with that. So, we'll see. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, let's look for plastic. And I was thinking of this plastic, this glossy plastic. So I'm gonna put that above there. And I'm gonna see if it's shiny enough for what I want. And again, I may go back to the gold armor. Now, what? Uh, actually, I think I am going to stick with that one. Um, and uh, I'm going to make some changes to the buttons. We'll use something else for the buttons. So um, I'll just, you know what? I'm going to change that to say black. And 
that's going to just be base. I don't need the names of them. Sometimes you leave the names. You want to remember which one you used. But all right, the black is not going to be everywhere. So I'm going to add a black mask. I uh, saw the wrong one. I'm going to add a black mask there. Come to my polygon fill. And we'll start with um, that. So I switch to mesh because then I can just select that easily. That and uh, other stuff that I want mesh for. Let's see what that gets. Just that. That's good. It's going to be that thing. I'm going to switch over to UV chunk fill. And that's why, why, where I, I put the seams in. So I could just easily select that. And this bottom part, you can see that now I've got... I've got the gold right there on oh, this bottom thing. I'll put that in black as well. Yeah. And that. And let's make sure that we have inside. I'll make that black. You're never going to end up seeing that, unfortunately, unless you zoom right in. Okay, so we also want that. And again, it's the seams that allow me to select that way. And uh, I'll be doing that. There are some seams here, so I can put something in there. So those pieces are going to be black like that. So in fact, I probably need another name. Let's use this glossy on here. Nice and shiny. And we'll make this black. So it's a kind of a, it's a different black. And I want that on the buttons themselves. So I'm going to put a black mask, come over here, and switch to mesh, and just click the buttons. And the, so the buttons will be shinier than the base, and it'll just look a little bit better with the text, I think. So we're going to have that, right, that kind of look. And I'm also going to want to do the cord, and that's going to be here. So I'm just going to leave that like that. I'll come back to Smart Materials and I'm going to search Rubber. And again, I don't know this plastic rubber here, if I downloaded it or if it came with Substance Painter. You can use whatever you want. I'll do that. And I'll switch over to Mesh. We're on Mesh. I'll just click once. Gets the whole thing. All right. Now, I'm going to come back and turn on this and turn off the base and have a look. Yeah, it's hard to say. I think I may stick with that for now, and we'll decide after. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to do a pattern in here. All right, so I think to do that, I'm going to add, I'm gonna add a fill layer and a black mask. And this fill layer, I'm gonna have color and height I won't worry about the, well, no, let's go ahead and put the height up like that. I'm going to leave the color like that so it's easy to see. I'm going to come to the black mask here. And actually, it's not going to, I'm not going to have to see that much because I'm just going to have to single click it like that. All right, so that's going to go in there. Now, there is a, a, um, a subdivision on this back in Blender. And I think when I get to Blender, I might try a just putting it on and seeing how it affects the textures because I might want that a little bit smoother uh, but we'll see but anyhow otherwise it just looks like it's been banged up a bit which kind of goes with the theme uh, I'm going to on this this layer here on the main layer I'm going to add a fill and I'm going to come over here and here I'm just going to alt click on height and I want that exposed because I'm going to come over to the procedurals and I'm going to type in dots. And it's actually this one here, metallic grate, that I want to try. I'm going to drop that on the dots. And it should go right in there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the tiling all the way up. And I'm going to play with the scale a little bit. And this is the kind of effect that I'm going to go for. I'm going to come back to here. And I'm going to change this to... I'm, I'm really partial to black for this. And that's really the effect that I'm going for. Yeah, nothing, nothing too special, just that. All right, and then if I wanted to, I could play with some of these 
some of these values here. So that's what I think I'm going to do there, just to give a bit of texture. And at that point, we're really looking now at the button. So let's just label this as dots. We'll call that dots. Actually, just before we do the buttons themselves, let's do a paint layer to do some alpha work. And let's do just height. And uh, I think it's drop it down. It might be put it up. I'm not sure. I'm going to look in alphas for bolt. Grab that. And let's just see if that's, yeah, that's the right way. Okay. Uh, what I thought I would do is I'll switch to orthographic just to have a little bit more texture of some sort. I just thought on this outer rim. I could do a bolt, let's see, not quite there, make it a bit smaller. Just in here, and it doesn't even have to be perfectly centered, and I'll up the resolution in a bit, even though I am using UDIMS, uh, and that's helped me. I, I don't have too, all that much resolution on here for these, but I thought I would do that, and then I thought on the back, I would maybe make them even bigger and I put a bolt like there and there and that's really all I can think of for where to put bolts I could do some other stuff on there so we're going to do dirt in a bit and then I'm going to try that other gold so let's go ahead and let's call this um Let's call it alphas. And because I might use more than one layer of alpha, so for example, I was thinking of doing something down here, but I wanted to show you a technique where you can get um, the anchors, you know, to, to get dirt on more than one layer. Because for example, if I put an anchor point on this one layer, and I do dirt above it. I think I'll show you that first. So let's just create a fill layer. And let's do color and roughness. This is what I typically do, right? Roughness all the way up. And let's do color, sort of a dark brown, or something like that, let's say. And then add a black mask, and then add a generator. And for the generator, choose dirt. And then you go ahead and you, and you adjust as much as you want. I mean, that looks pretty cool right there. Now you can see the dirt going in here. So in the end, I, I kind of didn't really need the holes. I still think it looks okay. Now that's a lot of dirt, but I, you know, this is an older unit. And, but what you will notice is that the bolts, which are alphas, haven't been affected. And I've talked about this quite a lot in my, in my videos. So, the way you would generally handle that if you have just one layer of alphas and often we'll go back and do multiple things on that one layer is you come to this one layer and you add an anchor point and it, it inherits the name of the layer and you come over to the dirt generator or whatever generator you've used and you scroll down to micro details open that up click true for height because we're using alphas and then you come down to the bottom and under micro height you click there choose the anchor point and then we'll, we'll watch this bolt let's say and then you change the reference channel to height and then the dirt goes in there and it will also be on these back ones so now those bolts are a little bit more believable and anything on that layer so I often will work on that one layer but what if you wanted to use another layer all right and uh, you know and the problem is here where you chose the anchor if I have another one you either choose this one or you choose the next one you know and so you can't really do more than one layer but there is a way and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get rid of that 
and now there's no anchor point for that dirt to actually reference and so it's not going to have the dirt in the bullets anymore because I want to try something down here so let's let make sure we're orthographic and let's say I've got alphas let's say that I actually change that to say screws bolt screws whatever you want to call them let's say I made another paint layer and I tend to use paint layers um, and I wanted this to say go up we'll see we'll see what works and and I'll just find something as I was thinking of this thing here this uh, what is this Celtic cross with hearts no is that the one yeah okay anyways anything that may not work in this design mm, let's see if I can find something else I think that's the one. All right. Well, let's say I wanted that there, and this is the area, like I said, that I may do some do some work. Maybe I would have that and uh, circle. Maybe I would select this circle and bring the border width up so it's just a solid circle and if there's any room I can put a dot there and here and here and here and do some other stuff on there all right anyhow the idea is now I want that dirt on the bolts and on there but I have two different layers I'll call this just design. All right, so a way that you can do this is to add a fill layer. Um, we'll call this um, height anchor. Add an anchor point so it gets that name. And here, switch this over to height and put that on pass through. And then you can switch it back to base color, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to just alt click height so it's only affecting the height so the anchor is now here and the alpha stuff I have below it should all get the uh, the effect you see this is broken so I'm going to come over here height anchor choose that and I'm going to make this height and my design here has got some dirt in there And so do my bolts. All right, so you could have a number of layers all below here. And in fact, you could take this and you could control G. Put it in a folder. You know, and you could still call this alphas if you wanted to. You, you can add more layers here. You can go back and do some other stuff. So let's say for design. I came over here and let's just say I wanted to put a dot you know here and see the dirt around it and there well, we gotta keep going let's see what it looks like put one there there, there, and there. I don't know, it's a dumb design anyhow. But that's what that's what we get. And so really the last thing that I need to do is to add some text to to the buttons. Alright, so I'm gonna do that. Let's see, there's the alphas. I'm I'm gonna do a new one. Well let's put it above for the moment. And let's do color and height. And height, I'm going to put me, I'll try it a little bit below. And for the color, what if I sample this? But actually, I'm going to want it brighter than that. 
try something like that. All right, I'm going to type in font. And I was thinking of using, I think this one, Font Libre, it's built in to Substance Painter. And I was thinking of five. Let's try that. And let's, let's snap it. Let's look down. And we'll try to get these as centered as I can. Let's see, do I like that? I think I do. I think it's all right. You get the idea anyhow. So if I do that and four. Three. Two. The only thing is it's, it's very difficult to move these after they're done, but of course you can just erase them and do them again. All right, let's go up now. Six. Seven. this for that symbol that yeah, probably could pass looks almost like ornate enough to, to that it would fit there that we'll do number sign oh sorry that should be zero uh, now I've changed the size Now that and that's what I get. Let's go back to perspective. Let's try. Actually, just let's name that numbers. And let's see if I drag it underneath, if that's going to have any positive impact on it in any way. Not really, eh? Actually, we'll have to drag it in here. Yeah, it's, it's not really going to matter for those. That's okay. I can leave that in there anyhow. And really the final thing then is just let's try putting on that lighter, lighter gold. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty, pretty hopeful about that one to, to be quite honest with you. All right. Let's just come back to this dirt here and type in instead of maybe 0 0.64 maybe 0 0.55 I'm going to save that and then let's look at upping the resolution and seeing uh, you know any major change it won't be anything major but um, all right let's change that to 2k see the effect that it's had on the bolts they're a lot sharper I think at this point what I'll do is I will turn on anti-aliasing I'll turn on the color profile and select uh, this one here and I could look at a different HDRI to have a look at this let's see no I think I'm gonna go back to the panorama I just want to have a look at the detail okay so that's very quick texturing 
but you end up getting something that looks pretty pretty nice now this is a, a little bit more banged up than you may have expected but that's kind of what I had envisioned for this and you can see the numbers on there now you could smudge them out a little bit if you wanted to I may actually decide to just leave this and uh, I, I like it well enough and and that is it short of bringing it into blender and and doing a render but I've done that in lots of videos where I've taken the UV tiles and exported the textures back into blender um, and so I will uh, make some renders uh, of this and I'll also submit a render for the uh, retro blender challenge all right, so that's really where we're at with the modeling and the texturing of this uh, retro phone. All right, so um, thanks very much for watching. I hope uh, there were a couple of tricks along the way that were helpful, or maybe you just got inspired to do your own thing. So take care, and we'll see you again soon.